All right. What I'm looking at right here, ladies and gentlemen, is my web design fall 2013 folder. A couple things that we did already together, and I'm reviewing it because, again, Brianna, wonderfully new to class, she's ready to learn some web design with us, is when I look in here, I have one file that is within here. And what is that file called? One. Now, we created this file using what program? Notepad. And by default, when I do a file save in Notepad, it, it's not going to save it as HTML. What did I have to do? I had to make sure I typed in .html. And when I did that, you will notice that my default icon for this file now is my Chrome icon. And how did I do that? What did I have to do? Yours might have been Internet Explorer. We went into Chrome, and what did we tell Chrome to be? Default browser. So if you actually moved to the computer, one to your left or one to your right, and went to open a file, it might, it, Chrome will not be your default browser. Default browser settings are always based on the computer that you're actually sitting at. Okay, so if you were in the library working on it or any other computer even in here, it might not have the Chrome icon. It would be whatever the default browser. And in our school setting, by default, everyone's default browser is Internet Explorer. But it is what it is. We can change it by just going under Chrome and doing that. So now if I double-click this right here, what's going to open? Chrome, right? So if I double-click, it's going to open up and show us our very wonderful page. Like, wow, I cannot believe we made such a cool web page together on Friday, right? Now, I have extra lines up here because I was demonstrating how if you put in enters or tabs or things, it's not going to go through. How do I actually go back and edit my code? Any idea? I can right-click and view source, and when I do that, I see all of my code, but I can't edit it here. I need to go into Notepad and go File, Open. I can browse for it. Is there any other way that I can do it? The other thing I have to do is right here I have to choose from text document to all file, and then I can open up. Does anyone else have another way? Because there's another way I can do it. Correct. So I'm in the folder area, and what Jeremy talked about is if I double-click this right now, it's going to open in Chrome. But I can right-click and open with, and I could um, find a program. I don't want to change the default program, though, right? Because by default, when I click on it, I want to open my browser. So what I needed to do is I could do that, and I could choose Notepad. When I was in... Notepad. By default, your file names are not going to show up because right now Notepad is only looking for TXT files. So I'm going to change the .txt to all files, and then I could open up one, again, just as a quick review. And Brianna will get you one in a, in a minute, I promise. So what I have to do now is get rid of all of those extra sentences. And I think I'm supposed to have a colon here, right? Is that correct? I think I had a typo on my one there. And I think I had the rest of them are all supposed to have periods. Just as a quick review. So I'm going to save that so that way when I go here in my browser, now ours matches, correct? Okay, so we are just reviewing what we did on Friday. Back in Notepad. Now, I am going to be grading your one. I will be grading these documents that we're doing together. So it's really important that you save them because even though we're doing them together in class, this is showing me that you're learning and we're not going to be able to write an HTML code um, until we practice. Okay. So right now what I need you to do is we're actually going to save this as a different file name. So what do we need to do? File. Save as. Okay? And I'm going to save this not as 1.html, but we're going to do, what do you think? 
.html. Now, I know it's changed, and I'm working with two, because right here, it doesn't say one, it says two. Make sense? Now, we're actually going to go in and apply some different formatting. Mm -hmm. Go into Notepad and then open. And then go File, Open. And then lower right-hand corner, change document type from text to all files. And then make sure you go on the left-hand side under your account. Yep, and then we good now? Good, 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 good. Okay, we're going to go through and do some fancy formatting because, well, admit it, this page is pretty boring, right? Okay, so we're going to use, remember I talked about headings? Heading 1 is the largest, and heading 6 is the smallest. So we're going to go through and put some headings in. So this title right here that is on the page, Creating HTML and JavaScript, do you see where that text is right here? In between center, not in between title. Do you understand the difference? Title is going to be what shows up here. Center is going to be what's on the page. I am going to go through and actually type in here, I'm going to put in a code for H1. And I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to do Save. Now, I'm going to hit Refresh. Why did nothing happen? It's worth a piece of candy. Nope. Nope. Correct, I didn't end it. I purposely didn't end it, but that's not why it didn't change. Brianna? I'm on one and not two. A lot of times students will get stuck on that and not realize it doesn't open up. What is the file name right here? One. What did I just save? Two. That may seem like a small thing, but it really can make your head go bonkers. You're like, I'm saving it and saving it and saving it, and it's not showing up. Yeah, she is really paying attention because she's like, I can't do anything on the computer anyway. Mrs. Gressel said don't. So even though I hit refresh, nothing will happen because I actually have to open up two. There's a couple different ways I can open up two. I can go from my folder here and double click on two. That would open it. Or right here, I can just replace the word one with two. Either way. Now, when I looked at it, now look what happened to this big title. Oh. It made it bigger. Would you agree? Doing okay, Jaren? Doing okay? Nope, it, no, it saved in your notepad. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. You go to open up notepad. File open. In the lower right-hand corner, change text document to all documents, please. Lower right-hand corner, all documents. There it is. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you have to end it? Now, what is happening is in Chrome right now, it actually stopped it so the whole thing isn't in one. And the reason being is because we have that beginning and ending center. Just watch up here what happens. I'm going to take off my beginning and ending center. It's not going to do a ton of things, but I'll show you. Because Chrome was kind of being a little smart for you and saying, oh, if you're centering it, I bet you this is separate. The other thing that will, could come into play is because you have those P's afterward, and oftentimes the P's will cause it to sit, think for you and say, are you sure? But because I had those center tags in there, it was reading it in Chrome and saying, I bet you that you don't really mean to be the whole document. Okay. That was a good question. You were thinking about that. But I think we're supposed to leave center in. And I'm supposed to have center before. Now, what I want you to do is at the very mm -hmm, that was not a good copy and paste. 
we need to put our code in in the correct order. And this is what I mean. Eyes up here. I know we'll get a little back and forth. It's not a lot of typing. Notice here, started center, then I did my H1. Which, which one of these do I need to end first, H1 or center? I need to end, do my H1 because we're kind of enclosing it in. Does that make sense? So on the outermost to center, then I did H1, and then if I had a P, and then if I had a B, or then if I had an IM, I would need to do it all in those orders. Does that make sense? So I need to make sure before my ending center that I end my H1. Okay, so please um, end your H1 that you started. And then I'm going to save that. I'm going to hit refresh on two, and you will notice now it looks back nice. Would you agree? Okay. Guess what I'm going to do on the next line of P? Or if you're looking in your book, I'm going to do H2. Now, I need to end my H2 before or after my ending P. B. Four. Okay, so right here, again, mine's a little bit bigger because I have my font size bigger just so you can see it better. But here's my beginning H2 and here's my ending H2. You're going to go to File and you're going to do Save. I'm going to go to here and hit Refresh. And now what do you notice between H1 and H2? Which one's bigger? H1. I want you to go ahead and do H H2 through H6, please. Okay, so go through and... All right, so when you go through and put your code in, we put it in in the same order. If you don't do it in the same order, it's more considered as messy code, and it doesn't look as professional. So that's why we made sure that we had our beginning P, then we did H5, then we ended our H5, and then we ended our P. So we went through and all the way through. So now we have this page right here where we have an example of the different size for heading 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now, if we were going to do this in Microsoft Word, we would have to go in and set our font size, and then we'd also have to set it bold, correct? Because you can tell that this was bolded compared to what it was before. Now, we don't have to do bold, and we can't set the font size, because everything, when you take a look at it in your browser, is going to kind of be set like based off of pixels. And for students that are not used to working in graphics yet, it's hard to make that transition between a pixel size and a font size. Like if you're going to make a giant letter in, on, that you're going to print out, you're going to set it like, like a font of 180 usually. But you don't want to set it to a pixel for 180 because 180 pixels is about that big. Okay. And for you to practice using pixels, I have a wonderful Chrome extension called Measure It. How many of you have used Chrome extensions before? All right, one person, two people have used Chrome extensions, three? Okay, now the question is going to be, what's the difference between an extension and an app? Mm -hmm. Where do I find an app versus an extension? You don't have to. The easiest way, I like your explanation. You're, you've been thinking about it. You know that you know it very well. These right here to the right of my address bar, these are all my extensions. These are things that I can do on any page. So, for example, have you seen this icon before, the plus sign? Easy way to add it to things. Like, for example, if I wanted to add it to Pinterest or Shareaholic type of things where you have a page where you want to share it. That's going to be that one right there. Um, this one is Chrome Reloader. This is the Google Shortener. This is um, Too Many Tabs. This is Cloud Browse, uh, Wise Stamp. Um, this is doing screenshots. And this is my spell checking for Chrome. So all of these here come up. But it's this one right here, this extension right here. It's called Measure It. That can be very helpful. And let me show you why. I love it for web design. So here is a page. Oh, I'll actually show you one that I had to use it on. Under Gridiron. 
Mr. Jeffson was working on the Seymour Thunder webpage for football, and he was on – what page was he on? He was on – not that one. This is a good example of an image being resized to fit that doesn't fit well. Do you see how people are really tall and skinny? So basically they modified the width, but they didn't modify the height, so now you look like you're tall, little stick people. You want to avoid that. I'm not picking on Mr. Jefferson. But that's an example of not modifying. Practice schedule, there we are. Um, Mr. Jefferson wanted help because he wanted this Google Calendar to embed on his web page. Okay. Now, in his web page, he is limited on his space where he can put things in. Okay. Because what we have here on the left-hand side is our navigation bar. The navigation bar is set and it's going to be the same on every page. And that is so wide. Can you see that? And then we also have some other things over here on the right that are taking up space. So even though I have a ginormous screen, your elbow's on your computer, just giving you, it was just flashing. Um, ginormous screen, they, this web design only allows me this much space for design. All of this, rest of this page is going to be filled with black. And you are going to notice it more on these monitors because they're so big than if you were on the LMC than you were on a Chromebook, which is totally fine design. But what he wanted to know when, uh, when, he was hel when I was helping him is he didn't want this um, calendar to go all the way over here because that was what was happening when it first came up. So he asked me how to change it. So the first thing I needed to do was I needed to know how much space does he have. So I installed this ex uh, uh, extension called Measure It, and all I had to do is I take my crosshairs here, and I go across, and whatever I highlight, notice that box? It shows me the height and the width. Do I really need the height? Is that what I'm concerned about? No, but the width, it tells me right here that the width is about 522 PX. PX stands for pixels. So I didn't have to try to guess and go back and forth and see what fit. Now, did I tell him that it was 522 pixels? No. Because 522 is going to take it right tight on either side. Isn't it nice to have a little bit of a buffer space? Which you will see right here, there's a little bit of a buffer space. So I actually told him 520 or maybe I did 515, and then he, he embedded the code in here with that pixel width, and it fit it there. So when you're doing web design and you look at something, and I'm like, oh, or even this uh, graphic here. How big is this graphic? Because it's a pretty big graphic. It tells you that it's 314 pixels wide, but it's 278 pixels tall. What does that cause us to have to do in order to see the content on the page? Look at the page. What do you see? What's that? I have to scroll up and down. Would you agree? Like, I didn't touch anything. I hit refresh. Their top banner is that big. And then I have that Great Lakes cheese icon. And for me to get to any content, what do I have to do? Scroll down. So my first question is, I, why do you think this is on here? sponsor advertising, okay, so, but do you think it needs to be that big? Probably not. And then people could actually get to their content sooner. Imagine if you were on a smartphone, how far would you have to scroll down to get to it? Right? So you're going to watch things, but, so this icon up, or the extension up there called Measure It is very, very helpful when you're doing web design and you need to know exact pixels. Okay. So that's, a, that's one little Google tip that I have for you. Um, so when we do our H1s through H6s, all of your fonts are always going to be measured in pixel sizes, not font size. Okay, so that's how we got off onto that random tangent of Google. Um, we went through and we went and put in our H1 and H2s. Um, take a look on page 1919 on the very top in that green section. 
What do you notice about those codes for your H1, H2, and H3? Did you notice anything? On the top of the page, what's wrong with it? There's nothing in between your H1 and H2 and H3. It just begins a tag and ends a tag. Did it do it to anything? So you can't just put them right next to each other. You've got to make sure that your tags are truly enclosed on whatever you want to apply that heading style to. So in our examples here, we have our H1s through H6s actually set to some text so we could actually put it on there. So it was a little bit of a trick question in the fact that you had to realize that there was nothing between your tags to make it do anything to it. Okay. Yep. What's that? Underst oh, I did. Good eye. Understand. I, I, and how's that? Anything else? I like that. Okay. Now, we went through one. We have just text on the page. Two, we have gone through and done our headings. Guess what we're going to do next? Guess what document we're going to do? Three. So as a heads up, we need to, in Notepad, do File, Save As. And we're not going to call this 2.html. We're going to call it T-H-R-E-E. -E dot html you have to type in dot html otherwise it will not work and by doing a file save as it's already should be in our web design fall 2013 folder and all i have to do is do a uh, save as What we're going to do now is we're going to do an unordered list. I talked about unordered list and I talked about ordered list. So for example, an ordered list, if I told you to give me the list of your classes, what class would you give me first? First hour. What would be at the bottom? The best class ever. Okay, seventh hour web design. We're all together. Got my joke. Okay. Why? Because it's lo that's the order that you go through the day. Just like if I'm giving you a set of instructions, like in the concession stand, first you need to do this, second you need to do that, it's going to be numbered. You have to have one, two, three. Sometimes you get just a list of things that you're supposed to do, but it doesn't have to be done in a set of order, like your parents give you some chores. Okay, and they just are going to write them down. You don't have to complete them in a second, separate order, but you just want bullets next to them. An unordered list is going to be bullets, and that's important for you to realize. Now, think about what I'm calling it, an unordered list. Unorder starts with a U. List starts with L. The first thing that we have to do in HTML is we actually have to tell it we want it to be an unordered list or an ordered list. How do you think you define an ordered list? O L for ordered list, unordered list, U L. So it's important that you kind of see how things are pulled together. So what I want to do is I want you, after learning to create HTML tags in many different ways, this one right here, the H2. I'm going to hit enter and I'm actually going to put in a UL, which again stands for unordered list. Now, I need to end my unordered list. And I'm going to have all of these items in here be my unordered list. So I'm going to put my ending UL right before my ending body. Okay. So I'm ending my unordered list there. Thank you. Now, what I need you to do is I'm going to replace, I'm going to put some extra enters in here because we know that enters don't represent anything changing on our page. Would you agree? 
All it does is just gives us spacing. I need to replace my P with an LI. And I need to replace my ending P with a ending, guess what? LI. What does LI stand for? List item. So I'm making an unordered list and an ordered list. Anything that I want to have numbered or bulleted needs to be considered a list item. So the first thing I did is I told it, this is where I'm going to start my list on my page. This is my beginning list item. Here's my ending list item. Now, here on, on 4, I need to also replace my P with my LI. Bless you. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set all of these to 3s instead of H4 and H5 and H6. I'm just going to use H1, 2, and 3 on this page. Why? Because it's just a little crazy to have that many um, heading numbers on there for all the different font sizes. It just distracts from my information. So all of these list items here, I have set from instead of being H4, H5, and H6, I'm leaving them all to H3, and they're all list items. And then that is going to look like this when you're done. Okay. I'm going to stop there for today.